Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and um, I'm coming to you today with a Top of the Blogs Extra. Yeah, I had decided that I was going to separate um, the recent deaths, and I say that plural because when I woke up this morning, there was another killing, <clears throat> and it wasn't going to feel right to, you know, do a video about Alton Sterling and now Philando Castile and then turn right around and try to joke and laugh about really some shit that don't even matter at this point. So <clears throat> out of respect for the subjects that we're talking about, I just decided I'll do this video now before work. And once I get my head right, <clears throat> you know, I'll come back and do my regular top of the blogs um, video later. But um yeah, you guys, so pissed today, like, so mad today, like, cannot understand what the fuck is going on. It is amazing to me that those who are, you know, sworn in to protect and to serve the communities that they work in, you know, the police provide a service. They are service workers. And um, no one said that their job was not dangerous. We appreciate those who put their lives on the line daily. The police are supposed to be here for us. And when it gets to a point where you fear the police, then there really is a big problem. I'm not saying that all police are fucked up, but I promise you, there are a lot of police who should not be police right now. I have friends, I have family that are police officers. And as far as I know, they all do their jobs correctly. But in the day and age of today where the police seem to have some sort of vendetta against the black community and black men in particular, um, I just don't know what to say. I don't know what to say or think about the police department at this, at this time. And I work actually around a lot of police officers. I know a lot of them. A lot of them are good guys, but I promise you, I just, I, I just, I don't understand. So let me just get to the story. First, Alton Sterling. He's a 37-year-old Baton Rouge uh, resident who sold bootleg CDs and DVDs outside of a convenience store. He had been selling those CDs and DVDs for years. Some people said somewhere around five or six years he's been out there by permission of the owner of the convenience store, who I'm sure got some level of um, security knowing that a known person in the neighborhood was outside of his store and everyone knew him. So there was a level of comfort between the owner Alton and the residents in the community. Supposedly there was a call to the police department that there was a man in the parking lot who pulled a gun on someone. So two officers by the name of Blaine Salamani and Howie Lake II. They showed up at the convenience store. There was some sort of confrontation. Witnesses say that Alton actually was startled that they came up on him so quickly and he honestly did not understand why they were stopping him, like I said, because he had been out there for years and everybody knew him. So just by witnesses' account, they said that there was a confrontation. You don't see that from the video that pr that was produced. <clears throat> it only starts when the police officers overtake Alton, tackle him down to the ground, and they have him pinned down on the ground on his back. Now there's been two videos, but the very first video that surfaced, there were some people that looked like they might have been in their car, so recording from their car, so it wasn't as clear. But you see them overtake him. You see that there's some yeah you hear that there's some yelling, some screaming. It almost sounds like you hear them say something about a gun and then you hear shots. Okay, the person who was recording was so startled that they moved the camera around, understandably. But you can hear the person that was recording saying, Oh my God, did they shoot him? She's like, Yes, they shot him, they shot him. Oh my God oh my god you know so it was just panic and everything but since that video surfaced there has been a second way more clear video from a different vantage point that someone tweeted me last night I was just like I'm not gonna watch that because I could already tell from the just the steel just the thumbnail I could tell that it was a much clearer video from a different standpoint and I'm not really good with seeing like gory things bloody things so I was like I'm not gonna watch that however this morning I went on ahead and watched it and um, so, <clears throat> you know, from the second vantage point, you see that the police officers actually have him pinned down, that he is not able to get up. He is on his back. You have to have an extreme amount of of, of uh, strength to be able to push two men up off of you. One was straddling him, the other one was kind of off to the side of him, but they clearly shoot him in the chest. Again, when they shoot, the, the camera kind of shakes, but this is a way clearer video. You don't see Alton pull out a gun on anything, but they shoot him in the chest. Just terrible. 
you know, and then when you see him struggling, his arm is kind of going all over the place, and um, the officers go, and you see one pull a pull something out of a pocket. It looks like a gun to me. I mean, what else would they be pulling out of his pocket? His wallet? And you just see the man die on the street. It's just crazy, you guys. Just, I'm so fucking pissed that, you know, that these men just have no regard for a human being's life, that you just kill somebody in cold blood on the ground who is posing no threat to them. In front of everybody! Obviously did not care that there were witnesses there. The person who took that second video was I mean, they looked like they were right behind the police. I feel like the police were so wrapped up in trying to take over this man that they wasn't thinking about anything else around them. I mean, thank God for cell phones. You know, I always make fun about how, you know, cell phones are the devil and all of that. But without, you know... Just a regular person's um, cell phone video account of what happens in the streets these days. We would not know. These men supposedly had on body cameras, but they told their officials that uh, their body cameras were disabled or had been knocked off in the struggle. Very convenient that two body cameras would be knocked off at the same time, you guys. But, yeah, that's what they said. They also said that the dash cam video from the police car was not as clear as well. Well, thank God for these videos that surface and the fact that these videos get out and social media is able to just put things out so much quicker even before the news outlets get a hold of it so that we can actually see it unedited and know exactly what went on. It's just disheartening and it just, just, just pisses you off. Okay, so we was mad about Alton yesterday. All day, hashtags, post people, you know, saying certain things and posting things and being upset and mad and just heartbroken over that. Well, this morning I wake up and I look at social media and someone in my top of the blogs request mentioned that I should talk about a Philando Castile. I'm like, who is that? What has happened now? So I'm scrolling down in my feed and here I see be, I mean, it ain't even no beginning to this video. You you see the very beginning of the video. The man is over, slumped over to the side. He's bleeding. And this woman is recording. I didn't listen to the sound because I was in bed. My husband was asleep. But I was just looking at it and just knowing, like, they done fucking shot somebody in the car. For what? I read the comment, I mean, um, the post about it and says that um, this woman lavish reynolds was in the car with her boyfriend he is 32 year old philando castile okay the police pulled them over because they had a busted tail light when they came over to the passenger side philando wasn't driving i don't believe he was or maybe he was i can't tell from the vantage point you know how sometimes the video flips but at any rate, Philando told the officer that he is a registered gun owner, that he's licensed to carry, and that he had a gun in the car. So he made that obvious. The police officer asked for the license and registration, and evidently when Philando reached for his wallet, the police in a panic shot him in his arm. And this is where the video picks up, is where he, when he is shot, like I said, he slumped over, he kind of looks like he's in and out of consciousness, and the woman is recording everything from her phone. But of course, I told you guys I was just reading this, but I, it, it, was a, it was graphic enough just without sound to know that, you know, this is just, this is just another... This is just another terrible tragedy. Um, so I just laid in my bed this morning and I just shook my head like this is a fucking shame. How do you expect a man to pull out his registration and his license if he doesn't reach for it? And this just makes it very evident and clear that there are a lot of police officers out there who are afraid. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't have a level of awareness. They should, should be aware of the danger that they could be in. But when you just automatically think that any black man that you pull over is going to do you harm, okay, because of the neighborhood that you're in, and that you're so afraid that it's any sudden little small slight move makes you want to kill them, I just... So they shot him in his arm. And from what we can tell now, they maybe hit a major artery and he ended up bleeding out and dying in the car. But, um... Yeah, that shit just, it just pisses you off. Okay, on my way to work this morning, since I was in the car, I finally listened 
to the video. There's two videos. There's a video of him getting killed, and then there is a video of her in the car, backseat of a squad car, because the police officers actually put Lavish Reynolds in handcuffs. Nobody seems to know why, because she was very... She was very compliant and was doing everything that they said, was speaking very formally, wasn't disrespectful, didn't even lose her head. You could tell she was afraid, but she knew she needed to keep that shit together. So they put her in the car. She's still recording. I listened to this recording, and this is where, it just, where I just lost it. So she's in the car. She's telling everybody exactly what happened. Her, you know, her boyfriend was reaching for his wallet. They shot him. She's hoping that he's not dead, but you know, she couldn't really tell. She couldn't really see. She was trying to record everything. It was evening. It was pretty dark by now. There was a lot of police officers there, and you can see the lights going on, and at one point, she loses it. She screams, okay? She's like screaming, crying, and her four-year-old daughter was just like, it's okay, mommy, I'm here. <laughs> was just like, you know, it is so sad that we have kids that have to be subjected to this kind of bullshit. What four-year-old should see somebody get killed? What four-year-old should have to protect their mother, try to hold it together and keep it together for her mother? You know, this is why I fear so much for black communities. Because they're turning out kids that should never even know about these things. Four fucking years old, you guys. They shot and killed a man in front of this woman and a four-year-old child who was in the back seat. That shit could have gone worse. They could have hit that kid. I'm sorry that I'm like this. But I, I just am so pissed about it because... You know, you just, I don't, the frustration. You just try to figure out what can you do to make these things not happen. And it seems like such a big feat. This whole Black Lives Matter movement, even that is frustrating when we all know that black lives do not matter. I guess they would want us to really say all lives matter except for black people. Maybe that's the better, you know, slogan to have. Maybe people will understand then what black people are trying to say. Because Black Lives Matter is a hashtag, you know. It's an organization that is trying to do something, obviously, but <clears throat> it's just... You guys, I'm just so frustrated. This is not sorrow. This is pissed the fuck off. I have kids. I'm worried to death about my son, who's about to go... You know, he's in 12th grade, he's going to be driving, you know, he's going to be, he goes out with his friends and things. And my son is a good kid. He's respectful, he's funny, he's a good student, he's a basketball player. And all it takes is one fucked up ass cop to just completely take my son's life. That shit is scary. I even worry about my daughter. You know, because she's a black woman. That shit could have went so, so so fucking south for that lavish girl you know if she wasn't able to just keep her head and the reason why she was able to keep her head is because we've seen sh this shit happen over and over and over again so she already knew how she needed to act but just frustrating as fuck okay now the alton sterling case is immediately was taken over by the federal government they're going to enter they're going to investigate the case and um you know since this this Philando Castile thing just happened I, I wasn't able to get much news information on that other than the video but the hope is that those officers are tried and jailed for outright murder they killed that man okay they killed him and um, I don't want nobody to be in my comments today talking about, oh, you know, black people always get upset when the police kill them, but they kill each other all the time. Listen here. Yeah, black people need to do better with black people. Ain't nobody not saying that. But if you're going to preach that black people need to be better to each other, then you should always preach it. Don't wait for a situation like this to come out and be like, well... I told you so. Black people don't never know how to act towards each other. So how do you expect a police officer to act? 
Do you know what that sounds like? That sounds like you're saying that police officers shouldn't have to protect and serve black people because they don't treat each other well. Okay, police officers who are sworn in to protect and serve the community no matter what color they are that it's okay for them to kill black men because black people kill each other how much fucking sense does that make i don't give a fuck what black people are doing to black people police officers every single color race creed whatever they are supposed to protect and serve those that are in the community so I don't want to hear it today, okay? Yes, there's a time and a place for that discussion. This is not it. I'm just asking people to be respectful of that because I don't want to hear that. I just want to know what is going to happen to the killers of Alton Sterling and Philando Castile. That's all I want to know. That's all I care about at this time. Yeah, I got to go to work. Out here about to sweat to death, crying face all swollen i thank god i didn't put my makeup on yet get myself together you guys and then i'm gonna come back and do my regular top of the blocks but i wanted to do this separate because i knew i was about to be like this because when i saw that video of that little girl you guys on my way to work this morning i just couldn't get i couldn't get it together i could not get it together so yeah this needed to be separate you guys leave your comments below be respectful of each other you guys that's all i'm asking and i'm gonna get off of here hope you have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day i I plan on doing the same. Until next time, rock stars. Bye.